This video explains how ions are formed from atoms and why. Okay, an atom. An atom has one dream in life, and that dream is to get a full outer shell of electrons. Let's have a look at magnesium. Magnesium always is written with two numbers here. The top number here being the atomic number, the bottom number being the mass number. So the atomic number is equal to the number of protons, which in a neutral or uncharged atom is also equal to the number of electrons. So magnesium has 12 protons, it has 12 electrons, so it has a positive charge of 12, a negative charge of 12, so an overall charge of zero. So let's have a look at our magnesium atom. In the nucleus we have protons and neutrons. We have 12 protons because that's the atomic number and that's what identifies magnesium as being magnesium is that number of protons that doesn't change if that changes it becomes another type of atom number of neutrons equals 12 neutrons we get this because the mass number here is equal to the number of neutrons plus the number of protons so we subtract the number of protons from the mass number and we end up with the number of neutrons. So 24.3 minus 12 is 12.3 and at this stage we're just going to round that to the nearest whole number which is 12. So we've got 12 protons so we'll also have 12 electrons. So we have 2 in the first shell, we have 8 in the second shell and in the last shell to make a total of 12 we will have 2 electrons. So we have a total of 12 electrons. So we have the configuration of 2, 8 and 2. 12 protons, 12 electrons, an overall charge of 0. So to get a full outer shell, this atom can do one of two things. It can either lose 2 electrons or it can gain two, 6 electrons. Atoms are lazy and want to use as little energy as possible. So it's a lot easier to lose two electrons than it is to gain six electrons. And that's exactly what magnesium will do given the opportunity. So magnesium will lose two electrons. So there they go, one, two electrons gone. And we now have two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the second shell. So we have a total of ten electrons. So we've got 12 protons, 10 electrons, we've got a total charge now of plus 2. Magnesium atom is no longer an atom, it's now an ion, I-O-N. It's a charged atom. So it is written as the symbol Mg with a 2 plus to indicate the charge there that it's lost two electrons. Let's look at a second example. Sulfur. Atomic number 16, mass number 32. Number of protons equals the number of neutrons in an uncharged atom. So 16 protons, 16 electrons, 16 positive charge, 16 negative charge, and a total of zero overall charge. So we look at that atom again. We've got 16 protons, 16 neutrons. Mass number minus the atomic number. So we've got two electrons in the first shell. And we've got 8 in the next shell, and we will have to have 16 in the third shell. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 in the third shell, which gives us a total of 16 electrons. So we've got a configuration of 2, 8, and 6. Protons, we now have 16. Electrons, we have 16. So we've got an overall charge of 0. So to get a full outer shell now, sulfur can do one of two things. It can either lose six electrons or it can gain two electrons. It's going to take the easy option, which is to gain two electrons. So this is going to become eight in the outside shell, and we're going to get two electrons jumping in. There they are, one, two. So we'll have two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, eight in the third shell to give us a total of 18 electrons. So if we have a look now, we've got 16 protons, because that doesn't change. 
We've now got 18 electrons, so we've got an overall charge there of plus 16 minus 18 equals minus 2. The sulfur atom is no longer a sulfur atom. It becomes a sulfur iron with a charge of negative 2 or 2 negative, which is what we worked out here. Third example here is sodium. Atomic number of 11. So we've got 11 protons and we've got 11 electrons. So our overall net charge here is 0. So we've got 11 protons and 12 neutrons. Remember, 22.9 minus 11, it's pretty much 23, so we can say 12. 2 in the first shell, 8 in the next shell, and 1 in the outside shell to give us a total of 11 electrons. Got a configuration of 2, 8, 1, 11 protons, 11 electrons, we've got a zero overall charge. So to get a full outer shell, it can either lose one electron or gain seven electrons. It's going to choose to lose one electron. There it goes. And now we have two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, so an overall of 10 electrons. We add those up again. So we've got 11 protons, 10 electrons, so a total of positive one charge. So sodium atom is now an iron, and iron is a charged atom, and it's written as N A positive. This positive here could be written as one positive, um, but we assume with just a positive there that it means that it's got a positive one charge. Okay, so let's have a look at the trends on the periodic table. In group one, you know that all atoms have got one electron in their outer shell. In group two, they've got two in their outer shell, and so on. Group 1 atoms will all lose that one electron to become a positive 1 charged ion. For example, sodium, Na positive. Group 2 will lose 2 electrons to become a 2 plus ion. Example, magnesium 2 plus. Group 3 will lose those 3 electrons to become a 3 plus ion. For example, aluminium 3 positive. Group 5 are going to gain 3 electrons to get 8 in their outside shell. So they'll become a 3 negative charge because they've gained 3 electrons. And phosphorus an example of that, it becomes phosphide. We change the ending to IDE when non-metals have gained electrons and become ions. Group 6 has gained two electrons, so it becomes a two negative charge. So sulfur becomes sulfide. And group seven gains one electron to become one negative charge. For instance, chlorine is now chloride with a one negative charge. So we can use the periodic table to look and see that all of group ones have a plus one charge, all of group 6 have a 2 negative charge. So it makes it nice and easy. We don't have to go and work it out all the time. And just to remember, group 8 doesn't change. They've got a full outer shell, and that's why they're known as the noble gases. They don't like to react. So just in summary, an atom will either lose electrons to become an ion or gain electrons to become an ion. If it loses electrons, it will become a positive ion. And this is known as a cation. If it gains electrons, it becomes a negative ion. This is known as an anion. Two ways to remember this, or well, to remember each one. I've seen, this is how I got taught, um, you can draw a cat with one of those cross noses. A lot of people draw cats that way. So you've got positive cat iron is a positive iron. Okay, the, we used to call them pussy cats when I was younger. So it's a positive pussy cat. An anion, a negative iron. A negative iron. 
So try and remember this one in particular, a negative iron and also your positive pussycat.